You're so clever. Double high five. Ooh. When I got pregnant, I was 15. Everything during my pregnancy was scary. They told me at my 20-week scan that it would be best to terminate him. I knew that I had to carry on. We were going to have a baby. It didn't matter at that time what was wrong with him. I'm tired of not knowing, and I, I just want definite answers now. Oh, lovely. I love kissing my mum and squeezing her. 16-year-old Abby lives in Farnborough with her mum, Lara, and nine-year-old sister, Paige. Riley. Riley. Clap hands. Good boy. Abby's son, Riley, is seven months old. Hey, how clever are you, darling? When I got pregnant, I was 15. And obviously, I was shocked because I didn't expect to be pregnant. It just happened. My mum reacted shocked because I'm a baby and she didn't expect that. She was obviously 15 and so young and had GCSEs um, to do yet and just thought how tough it was going to be, really. It's tough having a baby at any age. Abby had been with her boyfriend Jake for five months when she fell pregnant. We've been together for a long time. He was shocked as well, but he never told me what to do. He knew it was my decision, so he just left me do it. He's a very good dad and very supportive as well as a boyfriend. But Abby's pregnancy didn't go to plan. Everything during my pregnancy was scary and exciting. Up until 20 weeks, I was just doing normal things, but I didn't expect that would all change. Yeah, we went for the 20-week scan but they seemed to be taking a long time checking everything and I knew straight away that something was up. They told me there was an 80% chance he would be severely disabled. Um, they told me there was a chance that he wouldn't breathe when he was born because his brain wouldn't let him. Um, they told me he'd never walk. They told me he'd never talk. Um, and I just didn't know what to expect. <laughs> As doctors predicted, Riley wasn't breathing when he was born and was rushed to intensive care. I thought he was dead. It was awful, actually. And the fact that she couldn't even hold him after everything she's been through was tough. But he did really well, actually, almost straight away. He sort of wanted to get off the ventilator and breathe for himself, which was great. And it's really nice that Abby and Jake could have cuddles with him. Obviously, it's really hard because he had so many um, tubes and he had splint on his arm and bless him. He looked really poorly, actually, and so tiny. Tests found a cyst and enlarged cavities in his brain, which could be life-threatening. I just wanted him home. Um, I knew that he was breathing, and obviously I worried in case he stopped breathing, but I just had to be confident and fight like he was. Then they transferred him within a couple of days back to our local hospital. Um, and then he was home within a week, which was great, really. Since Riley's been home, Abby has been juggling motherhood while studying for 13 GCSEs. I just feel stressed out. Every mum wants their baby to have everything, and I can't give Riley everything if I don't get GCSEs. It may be a lot of time without him, but it'll give me and him the best future, so that's what I've got to do. Since having Riley, she hasn't missed one day of school. She wants to deal with it. She's really independent. Oh, see, I, I get emotional when I talk about how proud I am of her, cos... I mean, her day, you know, begins at 3.30 when others end. She gets in the door and has to start um, her day with Riley. There we go. Was you a good boy last night or a bad boy? I was a cheeky boy, wasn't he? <coughs> cheeky boy. It was one and then oh. 
past three. And then got up at five. Abby hasn't had a good night's sleep in eight months. There's times when she doesn't want to go to school in the morning, just like anybody who doesn't want to get out of bed in the morning. Um, you know, I am pushy to her and I just say, well, I'm sorry, you have to go to school. And sometimes it's a bit of tough love from me, whereas maybe other parents would have said, no, you stay in today because she's doing so well at school and she's got her GCSEs and she's predicted A stars. Oh, are you tired? <laughs> hey, Mummy needs to get ready for school. Yeah, I only do her hair. Yeah. I think sometimes it is a bit like two lives because at school, you're not being a mum when you're at school, you're being a 16-year-old doing their GCSEs. When Abby isn't at school, all of her time is spent managing Riley's specific needs. There we go. He can't suck properly, so you have to squeeze his cheeks when he's feeding his bottle. Otherwise, he won't be able to drink much. But he's got club feet, and he's obviously got his webbed hands that they need to sort out. He can't smile because of his nerves and his cheeks, so he won't ever be able to smile at us. <laughs> Everyone wants to see their baby smile, and when you don't see him smile, it is upsetting. Um, but we know he's smiling. And we can tell in his eyes that he's smiling. He's, he just puts a smile on my face. As for his disability, they still don't know what's wrong with him. I think I just expected for them to have all the answers and they didn't have all the answers and they still don't have any answers. And I am tired now. I'm tired of not knowing and I do want to know what's wrong with him. Um, I need to know emotionally because all I do is worry. What if his brain isn't working properly? What if he has a fit? because they said he might be prone to fits more. Um, what if something happens? I'm constantly worrying because they don't know what's wrong with him. Today, Abby is leaving school early to see a geneticist, one of several specialists investigating what's wrong with Riley. I just, I think you're expecting to have answers today, yeah? But we might not have answers today. I'm really nervous, scared. But hopefully they can tell. They said he's doing really well. Yeah, they're pleased with his progress. Um, they want to do another MRI scan. A bit disappointed that they can't tell us for definite because that's what I wanted. Yeah. Desperate to know more, Abby has decided to do her own research. She has entered Riley's symptoms on the internet and found a match with a rare disorder called Mobius. She's posted a message on a Mobius website asking for help. But hi, my name is Abby and I'm 16. I have a seven month old son with suspected Mobius syndrome. Only when I saw the symptoms of Mobius syndrome did I realise that it is everything that Riley had and was shocked that this had not been picked up. When they said my son was going to be severely disabled and not be able to breathe, they were wrong and they put me through six months of misery and worry about whether I would bring my baby home. I may be young, but I am strong. I've been through a lot over the past year. I really just want someone to talk to about this. Abby. Mobius syndrome is categorised by facial paralysis, limb abnormalities, difficulty breathing and cross eyes. Significantly, although there is no cure, it's not life-threatening. And I've had a few replies already. Someone's 30 and has Mobius syndrome. Just talking to people that have got it, or parents that children have got it, to see that it's, it's not just me that's going through it, and there are so many other people that are doing exactly the same thing. 
Abby will have to wait to see what the doctors say before she knows for sure if Riley has Mobius. In the meantime, life goes on. Abby is nearing the end of her final year at school and has her prom to prepare for. It's important for Abby to just carry on and do everything she did before. She had Riley, been at school and GCSEs, there's not much time to go out at all. So, yeah, everything's kind of like hyped up for the prom, really, and looking forward to it, like almost like as big as your wedding day, I think, for her. <laughs> so, yeah, she's very excited. <laughs> Lara has been saving for a year to pay off the £365 dress. Beautiful. How does it feel? <laughs> Mm, do you want me to take some more photos? Yeah. She looks like a princess. It's different, obviously, because I am a mum and going to prom. I think that makes it more special for me, yeah. It's just a day, like, where I'm going to be a teenager. I just think it symbolises the beginning of the rest of my life and going to college and getting a job and doing what I want to do. While Abby is at school, Lara helps babysit. Today she is meeting best friend Michelle for lunch. <laughs> Did Abby have a bad night with him last night? Yeah, we were the tinker again, weren't you? And got mummy up a couple of times. Do you think she panics at night a bit with him? She does worry, and every little sound he makes, obviously she gets up and checks that he's okay. <laughs> Do you want to lay like that? Because it doesn't look very comfy. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh. I don't like you doing that. No, I don't like you doing that. Riley. Riley. I don't like what he's doing, Michelle. It's almost like it's a fit. Riley. No, what's he doing, Riley. Michelle? Oh, hmm. my because Riley was born with a cyst on his brain, the family were told that he could suffer from seizures. He keeps trying to roll his head back. Do you to go to the doctors or? His pupils are really tiny. Right, he keeps rolling them into the back of his head and he doesn't normally do that. No. I don't know why he's doing I think it. We should go and get him seen by someone actually. Mm. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Lara decides to pick up Abby on the way to the doctors. If this had happened to a child that doesn't have any condition or any problems or anything going on in their brain or anything, then we would just think, oh, you know, and not worry about it. But because Riley has got everything else going on, everything is highlighted. Okay? You right? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we've had a bit of a scare today. It looked like he was have, maybe having a fit. Sorry, you don't have to... It's all right. Look, 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 look. Abs, abs. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for me to explain it because it's, I don't want it to sound a million times worse. Uh, Babe? Yeah? The doctor couldn't find anything wrong with Riley and he's been sent home. You're worrying everybody. Yeah. At first, I worried about him having fits, but eight months on, I'm thinking, so it's OK, he's not going to do that. But now he might have had one. It's so frustrating, it's so frustrating. I just feel like I'm going to be worrying now, forever, because I don't know whether he's going to have fits, and that's the one thing I didn't want him to do. Later that night, Abby is still worried Riley's not his usual self and she decides to take him to the hospital. See you later. Abby 
Abby has spent a sleepless night in hospital whilst Riley undergoes tests. His eyes are rolling back. His eyes are coming back. Riley. He's doing it now. What a baby. Riley needs to stay in hospital, but Abby has the first of many GCSE exams. Go, I need to go. OK. Family friend Michelle has arrived to take Abby to school. Love you. Say goodbye to mummy. I'll see you in a bit, OK? I love you. Good luck. Mm. I know he's fine, but I'm still leaving him in hospital, isn't it? She knows that he's in the best place. And, you know, at the moment, there's nothing that she can do to help. She's still got to carry on with her schoolwork because it's her GCSEs, and this is really important to her, which, you know, you just got to commend her for doing. It's a bit annoying I've got to go to school, but if I miss this, it's just going to ruin everything, so... You've got all your school stuff. Yep. Golden MRI. Abby's taking the afternoon off school to be there. So they were pretty certain that it was a fit because you don't necessarily have to shake. So that's what the MRI is going to tell us, if there's a, any abnormalities, because they think that's what's caused the fits. And also, fingers crossed, we will be able to get a diagnosis for the Mobius syndrome. Riley will have to be put to sleep, a procedure that carries its own risks. All right, lovely. Mm -hmm. All right, have you? OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a bit nervous now. Hopefully he won't wake up and he'll just go off to sleep, OK? All right, so we just bring this close to his face. There's Imani here and I'll just take him from you, OK? Do you just stay sitting just as you are? All right, he's fast asleep now. OK. OK, hold on, hold on. It's 45 minutes before Riley wakes up from the anaesthetic. I'll be back to normal self in a minute. We should be allowed home soon. It will take a few weeks for the scan results to come through. While Abby waits for the results, she has arranged to meet someone from the Mobius support group. Just excited, really, and um, nervous. I just hope that he says that, like, it doesn't affect him too much. Although Riley hasn't got an official diagnosis, Abby wants to learn more about Mobius. 25-year-old Martin is one of the only 209 sufferers in the UK, and his mum Pauline had to face the challenges of bringing him up. But nobody knew a lot about it. Nobody, nobody. In them days, they were told he'd never walk, talk, and he might not survive very long. I, I didn't like it when I was in school. I, I tried to explain to teachers about it. And mm. they're like, oh, no, it doesn't exist. Because, Riley, you never see, like, a smile. I think that's going to come in time, because um, it's only when I look back and see the milestones he's made, because I didn't feel there were milestones at the end, beginning, because you're just going from one yeah. thing to another. And you're around all the time, you don't see the difference. No. Yeah. yeah. And then when you look back, like, photographs and that, you think, oh, he does look different. Yeah. And do you live at home still? No, no. my own place. Yeah, I've got two kids. I think every mother wants their child to have a life the same as everyone else. Did you go to, like, um, normal primary and secondary yeah. school? Yeah. Um, the only thing I'd done differently was the speech therapists and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And then... Other than that, I stayed in a normal school. Yeah. To take it every day as it comes and not worry about things. The more I think about it, the more you get down about it. And I've found if I try to live a normal life, have normal friends, everything like that, I'm fine. Yeah. Meeting Martin has given Abby hope for the future. 
just feel better in myself, knowing that he's going to lead a normal life, hopefully. Um, just like Martin has done. Abby is in the middle of her GCSE exams and with all the hospital visits, she's behind on revision. Mummy doing her maths homework, is she? Yeah. yeah she Just panicking about my GCSEs now and about getting the grades that I need and revising, fitting it all in, really. Oh, <gasps> no, we can't have the pot. I've got to feed you it with a spoon. Okay. I feel sort of bad as well, like leaving him, like with Paige and Mum and I revise him, because it's not fair on them, but they understand. But Abby's studies are cut short. You don't want us put it. No, he just wants cuff cuddles. He's tired, oh, boy. Babes. It's okay. What about doing it when he, when um, he's I'll gone to bed? I'll do my homework later. It's good that he's gone to sleep straight away because normally he can be up for up to an hour, up or down. Um, so it just means I can just get on with the bottles now. And my juicy ass is. Today is a crucial day for the family. They are getting the results of the MRI scan and hopefully a diagnosis for Riley. I just want Dr Malik to like tell us the results and see whether he thinks that he's got Mobius syndrome and to discuss like what's next. But like, obviously if he says he thinks he has got it, it'll be good because like we'll know what to do next. How are things? Yeah. Yeah, well, well, we haven't been back in hospital, so <laughs> yes. we've had no more, yes. no more right. seizures or well scares. Well done, Riley, mm -hmm. yes. So, mm -hmm. um, yes. obviously that's good. And you're less After months of tests and referrals to numerous specialists, Dr Malik finally has an answer. Scan. Okay. I think the scan, the report is, I think is very good. There is evidence within the scan to suggest he has Mobius syndrome. Right. Uh, I think I'm right that I think he has got Mobius yeah. syndrome based on that the nucleus, the, you know, the seventh nerve nucleus is... Right, so it is. Right. It is, yes, yeah. yes. There's no more cyst. In other words, there is nothing, there's no surgery involved. There's nothing yeah. that's going to do with his brain. There's a question of providing you a support with that syndrome in yeah. the specifically. Yeah. And that means looking at his speech and language. Yeah. And keeping an eye on him, see how is he, you know, what, he, what is he doing. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. This is the news they've been waiting for. Mobius is not a terminal condition and Riley should be able to lead a relatively normal life. Happy tears, happy for Abs, you know. Like, I deal with things in my stride, but for Abby, this is really important for her. I'd, you know, I know she goes to bed every night worrying about, you know, whether Riley's going to wake up and stuff like that. Which, you know, is heartbreaking when you can't actually do anything about it for your child. So, today, to be told that is great. It means a lot to, like, for him to tell us that he's got Mobius syndrome, because it just feels like the end. <laughs> of what I've been, like, hoping for for God knows how many months. You know, it feels like everything's kind of going right for us for once, really. It took a while. Back at home, and Abby's friends have come round to celebrate the long-awaited diagnosis. <laughs>
Yeah. No matter what's wrong with him, he's still Riley. <laughs> yeah. We all knew that he was gonna have something yeah. wrong with him. We didn't. We just didn't like know what the definition of it all would be. Like, I would always be there. Yeah. Oh, don't. <laughs> Don't go on. You should make me you, you start. You've got through the worst of it now. Yeah. I'm You're prepared for everything that's gonna like happen. <laughs> it's like you sort of all gone through it as well as me. I told you he'd be alright. I know you always said it. Well proud of Abby. Like to be a teenage mum anyway is obviously like the hardest thing ever. Abby stayed at school. She's had to deal with Mobius syndrome as it is, and I think that's amazing. Um, right hand green. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I only pushed me. I win. <laughs> I've learnt just to not worry so much, and actually not to look too far into the future and take it as it comes along. I think I found out that I'm a stronger person than what I thought. Riley's definitely changed Abby's life for the better and most kids probably could have used it as an excuse not to go to school and to give up but Abby's actually turned it around and made made it a positive thing and almost like she wants to or wants to show people that you can do all of this and be a mum and, and be a mum with a child with disabilities as well. In the future I see me and Jake together still and Riley and I hope that we can have more babies one day and get married and just be normal because I want everything around Riley to be normal because if he's going to be a bit different, I don't want everything else to be different for him. I want him to have the life that any other baby would have.